Hey, it's Peter from the film scoring department. I'm going to be using markers to establish a tempo map here in Logic Pro to compose to. This is also known as laying out a cue. I'm assuming you already have a document in Logic and you've imported video and the video is properly in sync. If you don't know how to do those steps, see the video, which I have a link to in the description, about importing video and putting it in sync. There's more than one way to do this, but if you use this method, it's important to set a general tempo before you start putting in markers, enter the markers, and then lock them before you start manipulating tempos. I'm just going to play through the video and look for some key cuts and dialogue lines that I want to have marked as markers and want to synchronize my project to. That's important. Bam! I want really the rhythm of my music to start right there. It's on a cut. In the marker options menu, well, I should tell you how to, how to get a markers window open. You have to have this button open to show a list, a, a list here, and there are different tabs up there. One of them is the marker tab. Options. Create without rounding. Makes a new marker. And you'll notice that the simpty time of the marker I just created matches the location of the playhead and the movie. Exactly. If you double click on it, you can add some text to this as a picture description. Cut to Camaro, speeding towards camera, dude, bam. So I have a description of the cut, what's on the shot, and even the dialogue from one of the actors in there. I'm going to continue along this way, looking for other synchronization points. There's a cut I want when they cut to the city. I'm thinking that my music will have some kind of a change of key or something there at that point. Create without rounding. And you'll notice you could hit Control Option Apostrophe to get create a new marker without rounding. I'll do that now. Double click to edit it down here. Cut to City Scene. There's some dialogue up ahead I want to create some markers for. Right there when the guy says, no, I want to get that. No sites around here. Control Option Apostrophe. And I want to mark the end of that dialogue line too. Control Option Apostrophe. EL means end of line. There's ways of documenting things. There's a cut coming up I want to get where they start a chase. What about a chase? Well, that comes pretty quick at the end of the line. Hmm. 
Maybe I'll get it. Just mark it when we see the chase around here. Chase starts. I want to get that cut to the moment when when we see this shot. I'm going to back up and find that cut. Going one frame at a time. Oh, there it is. Marker. Gotta get that car landing. Car land. I think I'll take it right there. I'm gonna mark that as my last chord, my last note. So having created those markers, I want to convert them to scene markers so that they're all locked to Simpty. No matter what I do with the tempos, they'll stay where they are with the picture. I've selected them, options, convert to scene marker. Great. Now it's time to take a look at the tempos, so let's make sure that they're showing. Control clicking in the global tracks area brings up a contextual menu that allows me to show the tempo. And right away we can see my bass tempo shown as a blue line here. It's 170 beats a minute, which is close to, I think, the basic musical feel that I want to keep all along. I'm going to try to stay close. Uh, to that area so that if I'm using ostinato and looping drum beats throughout this cue that they sound continuous and they never lose energy. I can speed up or slow down within a range of 10 beats a minute and still accomplish this. Um, or if there's areas where I don't have a rhythm going I could have a lot more flexibility but I want to keep it in a close range so the energy continues. Now that my markers are showing up here in the global tracks area. Well, I can see it's somewhere in the middle of measure three that this first important event happens. Camaro speeding towards camera, bam, the cut to that. And if I want to try to edit the tempo so that that lands, I don't know, right on the downbeat of beat four, I can go to edit menu, tempo, tempo operations. In this window here, make sure you have create constant tempo selected. Make sure this is locked. I know the time of this event is 59, 12, 16 because it's in my markers window. Whoops, I left the field. 59, 12, 16. The range of measures, I want to start in measure one and wind up at measure four. And I want the program to guess a, a tempo for this. And it looks like it would, it's showing me a, an image here showing how high I would have to set the tempo to accomplish this, to squish in these first four bars, first three bars, and get this marker to line up right on the downbeat of the fourth. It's pretty fast. That might be too fast to really stay within my basic range. However, I know that my rhythm won't have started until right on this cut. So I have a lot of flexibility in this particular case with this timing. So I'm going to say apply. You'll notice I'm not selecting continue with new tempo because I want this tempo map to resume back to my base tempo after it reaches this timing. And you can see right away here in the tempo track that new tempo put in and you can see now the marker appears right there on measure four and I can make a musical start with my rhythm and ostinatos right there on measure four that will 
synchronize perfectly with this cut. Looking ahead, the next picture obligation I have cut to the city scene happens just before bar 13. So let's check this out. These two are still locked, that's good. The timing that I'm going for the city scene is 59.25.05, which I get from my markers window. Right arrow moves me over. The range of tempos starts at measure four, and we're aiming for measure 13. We're gonna see what the guess is from the computer. And look at that, 172. Well, that's really close to my base tempo. I love that. And in fact, it's so close, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell the computer to just continue with this tempo afterwards. All right, so now we see the marker is right there on bar 13. Our next picture obligation is where the guy says no. And I see that bar 16 happens before that. And I have a sense, I don't even really want to change that, actually, to be honest with you. I think that whatever change I do musically there to get out of the way of that dialogue can happen just before he says no. Let me play from that point, see what I'm dealing with. So, that works out okay. That just luckily worked out just fine for me. What I can do though, from bar 16 to bar 19, is retime the tempos a little bit so that there's a synchronization to this chase starting. So let's do that. The chase starts time is 59.33.13. The range, in this case, measures 16, where I last checked, up to measure 19. And look at that. Logic's guessing just a little over 173 beats a minute. It's perfectly within range of my, my base tempo. And I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna leave this box checked and I'm gonna hit apply. You can see that a new tempo is inserted starting at bar 16, just a slight change, and that this marker now is landing right on bar 19. Our next picture obligation is the cut to the car flying off the building. I really wanna get that to land, if I can get it to land on a downbeat, maybe the downbeat of measure 26. Let's see how that works out. The timing I need to get to is 59.42.20. The range of measures is from bar 19 to bar 26. Computer's guessing that we're gonna to have to jump up to 180. Still within, you know, 10 beats a minute range of, of change from where we started. So really, that seems like a reasonable change that we can take. And in fact, the fact that it's a little bit faster, you might feel that change of tempo a little bit. It might increase the intensity of this car chase that we're going through. So I'm gonna say apply. Next picture obligation I have is the car landing. And it looks as if the car is landing somewhere in the middle of bar 32. And I could slow things down during the point where the car is flying through the air to get this to actually synchronize perfectly at bar 32. I wonder how much it would have to slow it down. Let's see what we get here. So the car landing is 59.51.07. The range is from measure 26, that the car takes off, over, we're shooting for measure 32. Let's see how we do with this. Slowed it back down to our original tempo. 
And I also believe that during this segment, I won't really have the pulse going so much. I may even have no music at all. So I can get away with a jump in tempo, and it's not even that much of a jump. It seems like a good one to go with. I'm not going to have it select to continue with the new tempo. I actually want it to resume back to that fast tempo for my last phrase, in this case, around 180. So I'll uncheck that. So now a new tempo has been inserted during this section where the car is flying off. So we have the car landing right on bar 32. We're back to our tempo 180. And even our last note was working out to be pretty darn close to measure 34, which is close enough for me in this case, creatively. And I think I'm done mapping out tempos here.